No matter where I may find myself in life, I am always encouraging people to develop their spirituality. And as a disciple of Yeshua, I am always pointing them to the Lord. And I don't do it in a way that pushes my beliefs on them. What I do is I prompt questions, right? And then I relate certain things to everyday life so that this can be a reality, right? Something that they can relate to. Uh, because a few days ago, I had a conversation with someone, like not even a friend, just I was out, I needed a service, and me and this person started chatting. And they started telling me about how difficult life is and how, you know, it's like no matter how much you work, it always seems like you're falling behind. And, you know, and I told them, yeah, like it's kind of what it is right now, right? I mean, uh, lots of young people don't see hope for the future. Uh, which is leading them down very dark paths. And, you know, and I agree, you know, that this is the situation that we're in. However, right, and this is where I turn things around. And I said to this person how my faith journey has helped me immensely in just dealing with the obstacles and the challenges of living. And then... This person started to tell me how, you know, at one point in their life, they were following a certain religion. So they said they were fasting and praying, but were just not connecting, right, spiritually to any of what was being kind of done, right, through these rituals and so forth, right? There wasn't a real connection there. And then I said, you know, I get it, right? A lot of people um, have tried different things and it's not so clear cut. It's a journey, right? We're all on, we're, we are all on a different journey. Um, whether we realize it or not, we are looking for the truth, right? So um, in conclusion, you know, he said, well, I don't believe in a God. And I'm like, okay, well... I'm here to tell you that there is an ultimate truth. Um, you are to search for it, right? Like how it says in Matthew 7, 7, uh, seek, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, right? I had to look up on my wall because I have a, a picture uh, with that verse on it, which I actually purchased before I came to the Lord. So we have to seek and the Lord will reveal himself gladly. Right? But if you're constantly rejecting and um, being distracted and living in perpetual darkness because that's what you've chosen for yourself, then it's going to be very hard right, to get closer to what it is that you're truly looking for here. And I told this person, you know, I said, I said to him, you are loved, right? You have a higher purpose. I'm sorry, but I do not believe that we evolved from monkeys. We, of all of God's creation, right, we are the only ones that have been designed to have fellowship with him, right? You don't see the dogs worshiping anything or uh, the plants. Like, yeah, they're living, but they don't have that ability to make a relationship, right, a connection to their source. So... This is kind of how I try to share what I believe without coming across intimidating, right? Or like you need to go to a certain church, you need to follow a certain doctrine. Like I just drop the name Jesus because a lot of people wouldn't understand Yeshua, right? Um, so I talk about Jesus, I share what he's done in my life, and I even told this person that the Lord took me out of my self-destructive habits, right? I told them that I used to do a, a lot of things that I no longer partake in because, again, I am 
looking for truth here, right? So now this, now this was just like a little preamble of kind of where I'm getting at. So I really do wholeheartedly share, right, the importance of developing our spiritual growth. That means maturing in the things of the Lord, right? Um, because we are overtaken by the physical, right, the flesh, and by what we see. And most of us are investing way more time in developing our careers, which again, these are there isn't anything wrong with this, right? Because sure, you want to be successful in life and, and provide for yourself and your family. Uh, again, nothing wrong with these things. But if you are completely neglecting your spirit, then you're in deep trouble, right? And most people, they are. They're in spiritual poverty. They're bankrupt, right? And the reason, the main reason why I'm asking people to really delve further here into their spir spiritual well being is because everything comes from the spirit, like from the spiritual realm, and then is manifest into the natural. It's like um, in Genesis how we learn about God speaking things into existence or how we were a thought in, in God's mind before we ever came to be, right? So we all are derived from a spiritual essence. We come here for a while to do our journey, right? And then we're going back to the spirit. It's like full circle. So... For us to just exist here merely on like just the superficial things of life, right? And investing all of this time and energy into things which will perish eventually, right? Like, yes, like I said, it's great to develop yourself professionally um, and to set goals and take care of your body and your mind and uh, keep things in check in that way. But how many of us are totally neglecting our spirit? The part of us, like I said, is the essence, but because it's invisible, we pay no mind to it. And I think, well, no, I don't even think I know that we are diminishing the quality of why we why we were created, right? We were not put here to run on this perpetual hamster wheel to make it to retirement, maybe enjoy a few years, uh, create a legacy for our children, and then just pass away. Because you're not taking any of that with you. Your belongings, your bank account, the homes you own, nothing is coming with you. I actually had a chat this morning with someone and uh, they were telling me, how, you know, back in the day, people used to bury themselves with their treasures and uh, anything they loved on this earth, right? Anything physical. And it's like, you kind of miss the mark here, right? Like, if these were the things you were living for and so invested in, I'm not sure how much they're going to help you going forward. So, this is the human condition, right? And I am just passionate about sharing the truth, right, and the Lord with everyone I see. doesn't matter who you are, whether I'm at work, whether I'm just running to the store and I just happen to have a chat with someone, it always just comes up because that's the reality that I live in, right? And most of the time you'll know what's really in someone's um, heart just by having a conversation with them and by listening to what it is that they talk about. Right? Some people will fondly talk about their family, about their accomplishments, about how much they've acquired in life. For me, I always just point people back to the Lord. Always. Right? So it's just it just comes naturally to me. It's not like, oh, I'm going to the store today. Let me talk about Jesus with the first person that I see, right? It's it always comes naturally, right? Because I just listen to what someone's saying and then I have something spiritual to say back. That's just how it is for me, right? Because I'm so deep into this now. And 
before I conclude, because I want to keep this message relatively short, but yet hopefully impactful. Um, so a few reasons why we really want to foster our spiritual growth. And again, this is not an all-inclusive list. These are just a few things. And um, just to get us thinking a little bit more along the lines of, you know, our spiritual well-being. So the reason, one of the reasons why we want to grow spiritually is because we will never fulfill what we were created for. Like our true, the true purpose of why we were put here until we connect to the source that placed us here in the, in the, in the beginning, right? Like what is my design? Like why am I here? Why do I exist? Right? Why are all these things happening to me? What can I do, you know, in this climate? Yes, things are very hard and difficult and I see people suffering around me all the time. I'm suffering too, right? So what is this for? Is it for nothing? Is it just for me to accumulate stuff, climb a corporate ladder and then die? Or like what's going on here, right? So by us developing that connection to the Lord, he will tell you what it is that you were put here for right and then you will really live with like true fulfillment because you're not going to get fulfillment from being married right you're not going to get true fulfillment from your parents from your children they are they play a part in that but they as human beings right like we all have the ability to fall short and disappoint right so if you put all of your cards into marriage it's going to make you happy and um going to give you everything you need well you are married to an imperfect person who is going to disappoint you hurt you possibly betray you right so our fulfillment only comes from our creator that's it right and everything else is a bonus um a spiritual maturity will help you overcome your flesh right sin temptation, the enemy, and so forth, right? Like, like I said, everything happens in the spiritual and then it manifests into the natural. And that's why Yeshua said that if you even look upon a person with lust, you have already committed adultery. Or if that, or if you hate your brother, right? That you have already committed murder in your heart. So, like I said, you know, you see here how, yeah, I haven't done the act, but it's already planted in my heart, that seed, to go and commit it, right? So we need to then go back into the spirit and deal with whatever's going on there. That's why I've been able to put a lot of things in check in my life because I'm nipping it right at the source, at the root of it, right? Because the, whatever's in the root will then bear that fruit, right? So we're going below the surface, looking at what's going on there because from that place is going to, something's gonna sprout out of that, right? Another thing about our spiritual growth is uh, getting closer obviously to the Lord, right? Doing what's pleasing to him, you know, by our obedience and um, by creating that intimacy that we, each and every one of us desires, except we don't, a lot of us, if we're not walking in the light, we don't, we, we're not connecting that, like that's truly what we're looking for, right? Because we found ourselves in darkness because of the choices that we continue to make the rejection of the truth that we continue to do and that's where you will stay right because you're not looking for anything more right because you're content or so you think you're content with kind of where you're at right but we truly want to be in God's presence and how and we always are right he's He's spirit, right? He doesn't need to be, it's not like a person coming to visit you. God is in your room. He 
the, if you've accepted the uh, Yeshua, he's the, he gives us the Holy Spirit, um, which is God's spirit. So he indwells us um, internally, right? And that's how he speaks to us. Um, he can speak to us through circumstances. So we are always in the presence of God. It's just it's just about developing that sensitivity, right, to him being there. And then once you know he's always there with you, no matter where you may find yourself, that is a very powerful thing. And um, also uh, spiritual maturity will help us to develop and strengthen our relationships with people. Because the Lord is constantly teaches us, you know, to love others as we love ourselves. So obviously there has to be like, we have to love ourselves um, before we can, because you can't, you can't draw from an empty well, right? So you need to fill yourself up. Well, the Lord, you have to allow the Lord to fill you up, right? With love and peace and joy. And then you can pour that out to others. And that's how we love them, right? We become long suffering. Um, I know many times I've been really stretched to my limits, you know, and um, thinking that I cannot endure any more of this, whether it's with a person or a situation. But God somehow always pulls me through, you know, through every single thing I've been through in my life, things that were really put out to destroy me. And I know for a fact because like people that were very dear to me were destroyed. So I'm, I'm so thankful that at least I have had, I've had the opportunity to make it this far in life and to actually understand why I'm here and to hopefully make a difference in other people's lives as well, you know, because time is short. And even today I was thinking about a couple of loved family members that I lost along the way, very close to me, very dear. That really, again, stretched me to my limits. And I felt so sad for them because they lived in such darkness that they never got to taste how good God is and truly live for him. And that, to me, is a tragedy for anybody. That's why I have to speak on this stuff. Because I have, I have seen this like so, so closely in my life right that like people's lives were truly destroyed from their neglect of the truth because they found themselves um going after things that were cheap and didn't provide any return if anything it took from them but never gave back and another thing is that when we develop spiritually and mature and grow it helps us to surpass any limitations we may have right so just like it says in scriptures with god anything is possible and that's what i always remember um i may i may see things in the natural that just say no like this is not uh this is not possible what are you thinking? You're crazy. How could you? You know, um, it's going to take a miracle to get out of this and, and so on and so on. And then I found that every time I've held on to, to the truth, I've come out on the other side of it victorious. Not to say that along the way I didn't suffer because that's part of the, that's part of the journey. But on the other side of it is great victory and just joy, right? Because you've made it, obviously, with by the grace of God. Uh, and another quick thing that um, spirituality does for us, like when we heighten ourselves um, to a greater level, like when we level up spiritually, is... Um, our mindset shifts from scarcity to abundance. So we no longer live like, and I think this goes back to the limitation thing I just mentioned is like, because with God, all things are possible. 
we understand that God is over everything and everything belongs to him. Your material possessions, the people you love, everything, you know, your entire body, your spirit belongs to God. It's, that's what it is, right? There's no escaping that. So if you know that your father in heaven is over everything and has resources that you don't even know about, like he can bring things into your life that have never even crossed your mind. And I love when I, like when I think about that and I'm truly like in faith, it's amazing because God who created everything in his wisdom can do anything he wants in your life. He can bring certain people. He can create certain opportunities. I've seen it even in my own life, like time and time again, right? So it's like um, sometimes people say, oh, there's not enough jobs out there. Or, you know, I'm just using something simple so that people can relate to. And I'm thinking to myself, you would, your jaw would drop if I told you how many jobs I've had in my life. Um, so I've always believed that if God put me here, he will provide for me, right? That's, that's for certain, right? Doesn't matter if it's maybe, it maybe it's not a mansion. Maybe I'm not driving the top of the line car, but God is always going to provide exactly what I need, right? So I want to share this encouragement as a means to get us to open up to a, a new reality, right? One that will truly enhance the quality of your life, will bring prosperity and blessings, you know, abundance. But it starts with your pursuit of the truth, right? Seek and you will find. So until next time, God bless and amen.